Hallelujah. Good morning in this place. Uh, let's just go ahead and praise our God. Uh, lift up your voice uh, and thank him. Uh, the one who alone is God. Uh, the one who alone is your maker. The one who created the heavens. Uh, and the earth, the one who has made you who you are, the one who, because of his grace and his mercy, we have the confidence this morning to come into his presence. We can come boldly before the throne of grace and mercy. We can come to him who calls himself our father, the father of the fatherless, the helper of the helpless, the one who has the solution to every challenge, the one who has the answer to everything that earth cannot answer for us, the one who is greater and greatly to be praised. Lift up your voice and thank him this morning. Exalt his name. Pray Praise him. He woke us up this morning. His grace is sufficient for us. His goodness and mercy, they follow us all the days of our lives. And so we have come to bless him, to return the praise to him, to return the glory to him, to say, Father, you are worthy. You are worthy of our thanks. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of all glory, all honor. Hallelujah to you, mighty God. Hallelujah to Yahweh. Hallelujah to the one who is self-existent. We know that name Yahweh comes from the transliteration of the Hebrew word of God, Yod He Fav He. And the meaning of that name is the self-existent God whom nobody created. He predates everything that is here on the earth. He predates all the fallen angels and Lucifer himself. He predates evil. He predates whatever you're seeing. He is the ancient of days who has been here before time began. And so because he predates everything and everything emanates from his power, he has the power to deliver. He has has the power to save. He has the power to change our lives. And so we worship him this morning. The one who is self-existent. Because he's self-existent, nobody can kill him. Nobody can dethrone him. Nobody can remove him from his seat of glory. Nobody can steal his power. He predates everything. Let everything that has breath in this place praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Great is our God and he is greatly to be praised. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Bible says about this God that we are serving uh, in Psalm 90 verses 1 and 2. I want to read it for us in the Passion Translation. The Bible says, Lord, you have always been our eternal home. You are our eternal home. Child of God, there are places you go to that you feel harassed, you feel troubled, and you can't wait to get home. You're like, I just want to go home. I just want to get home. Because when you get home, home is a sanctuary. Home is a place to rest. Home is a place to be yourself. Home is a place not to feel under attack. But our God is our eternal home. When we gather in this place, we've not just gathered on a platform to pray. But the Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, from verse 22 that we have come to Mount Zion hallelujah we have come to the city of our God we have come uh, to God uh, the just judge of the universe uh, we have come to an innumerable company of angels uh, we have come to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven we have come to the souls of just men made perfect uh, and we have come to Jesus uh, the mediator of the new covenant uh, whose blood uh, is speaking uh, over the mercy seat uh, and is speaking uh, mercy Mercy, mercy triumph over judgment. His blood is speaking a louder, more gracious, more nobler message than the blood of Abel that asked for vengeance. The blood of Jesus uh, is speaking for us, uh, no matter where we've been or who we are, as we bring ourselves home. Uh, Lord, you've been uh, our eternal home. Uh, you are our home. Uh, we have come home. Uh, we've come home to our Father, to the one who loves us, uh, to the one who loved us enough to send his only begotten son to die in our place even before we were born. The Lord already had a solution for the deliverance of mankind. That is why even from the Old Testament, we can begin to see from Genesis the, the prophetic signs, the, the signs and the shadows that the Messiah was going to come. Even from the time Adam and Eve fell, God already began to show them, I have a plan for your redemption. He's already had this plan a long time ago. So when we gather in this place, we have come home. We have come home to our father. Our father is our eternal home. And the Bible says in Psalm 90, you are our hiding place from generation to generation. This morning, child of God, bring 
bring yourself uh, under the shadow of his wing uh, by faith. Uh, come to Mount Zion. Uh, he is our hiding place. Uh, he will not just hide you. He will hide uh, your progenitors. Uh, he will hide uh, your descendants. Uh, he will hide us uh, from generation to generation. Uh, he is able this morning. Uh, we bring ourselves uh, under the shadow of his wing uh, because he is our hiding place. Uh, we are not accessible to the agencies of wickedness uh, because we bring ourselves uh, into his presence. Uh, we come to Mount Zion uh, where evil cannot access. Uh, we come to Mount Zion uh, where satanic agendas cannot triumph. Uh, we come to Mount Zion where the word of God uh, is living uh, and is powerful uh, and is doing great things. Uh, hallelujah. Bible says in Psalm 90 verse 2, long before you gave birth to the earth and before the mountains were born, you have been from everlasting to everlasting, the one and only true God. Ever before creation came into being, he already existed. He is the one true God. Bible says it's from everlasting to everlasting. That's the Hebrew word, El Olam. El meaning the strong and mighty one. Olam meaning from everlasting to everlasting. He does not diminish in strength. He doesn't reduce in power. He is God. El Olam. Hele Balaba. If there be prophets uh, in the human realm, uh, they will come and go. If there be apostles uh, in the human realm, uh, they will come and go. If there are pastors in the human realm, uh, they will come and go. Evangelists, teachers, they will come and go. But this God is from everlasting to everlasting. We continue to abide under the shadow of his wing uh, because there is no day he's ever going to leave us or forsake us. Uh. And so, Father, we thank you. Child of God, bless him this morning. Honor him this morning. He's done it again. Again, uh, look at you this morning. Uh, you are alive. You are well. It is well with your soul. Uh, declare it to him this morning. Uh, according to his word. Uh, in this Psalm 90. Lord, uh, you have always been my eternal home. Uh, you are my hiding place. Uh, from generation to generation. Long before you gave birth to the earth. Uh, and before the mountains were born. Uh, you have been from everlasting to everlasting. El Olam. Uh, you are the one and only true God. Uh, and I worship you and I thank you and I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you adoration. I reverence you. How excellent is your name. How mighty is your name. How marvelous is your name. Shana makura maze kele bosia na makura bababa. Orianda la bosia. We thank you, O oh God. You are our dwelling place. You are our hiding place. Hele kese kele gado sokoto robosia. Mashala makura maze kele bosia. Makura bababababababa. Le kese ketele. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Be exalted in this place. Be exalted in this place. Be exalted in this place. Be exalted. Be exalted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. We bow down and we worship Yahweh. We worship him. We worship him. We thank him. We glorify his name. Thank you, mighty father. Abba, you are worthy. Abba, you are worthy. Abba, you are worthy. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's please go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. I will, first of all, read for us from verse 10. And then we will go backwards to verse 1. Revelation 12 from verse 10. I'm reading the Amplified Version. Bible says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom, the dominion, the reign of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters has been thrown down at last. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. Verse 11. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith 
even when faced with death. Child of God, this morning, I want us to come again in the presence of God and say, Lord, I receive salvation. I receive your power and I receive your kingdom, your dominion. Lord, reign in me, reign in my family, reign in my neighborhood, in our city, in our nations, reign in the nations of the world. Come, O God, and reign. Have your dominion, O God. Come and take your place. I receive salvation. Remember, salvation is a package. That um, word salvation in the New Testament is the Greek word soteria. And soteria is more than just fire escape from hell. Soteria means that, of course, you are redeemed from sin. But you are also sanctified, set apart for holy use, washed clean. You are justified as if you've never sinned. Any accusations against you when they come against the blood of Jesus, they fall to the ground as ju- as dust. There is also glorification, looking like God, looking like Jesus, being changed from the inside. Salvation has so many components to it. There is healing in there. There is transformation in there. In salvation is the full package. There is provision. Everything you need is in salvation. I want you to pray this morning according to Revelation 12. Uh, oh Lord, uh, from verse 10, I receive salvation this morning in its entirety. Everything that Jesus died for me to have, I receive it. What Jesus was nailed to the cross for, I receive it this morning. The legal transaction of his death, uh, let it speak over my life, over my household, over my spouse, over my children, children's children, parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, prayer partners, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let the legal transaction of Jesus being nailed on the cross, let it speak over my life. I receive salvation. Jesus was nailed to the cross so that he could silence the powers of darkness over our lives, so that he could nail to the cross every legal ground that was standing against us. He died on the cross so that we could receive transformation uh, and new beginnings. Uh, Lord, everything your legal transaction has given me on the cross, uh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Uh, Child of God, uh, Colossians 2, 14 and 15 tells us uh, that Jesus uh, has blotted out, uh, he has cancelled uh, the handwriting uh, and the ordinances uh, that were standing against us, uh, that were in force against us, uh, that were contrary to us. Uh, he has taken them out of the way evil covenants, uh, evil dedications, uh, evil initiations, uh, evil trade agreements. uh, He has taken them out of the way uh, by nailing them to the cross. uh, And the Bible says uh, he has spoiled principalities and powers. uh, He has put them to an open shame. uh, He made a public spectacle of all of them, uh, stripping them uh, from all their weapons of warfare that they had. Uh, He's removed their power to accuse us. Uh, So this morning, uh, we enforce uh, the legalities uh, of of the cross of Calvary. We enforce the legalities uh, of the crucifixion. Uh, everything Jesus died for us to have. Uh, I say I receive salvation this morning. Uh, child of God, receive salvation. Uh, receive salvation uh, for every area of your life. Uh, wherever they are question marks uh, and there are questions uh, about the will of God for your life. Uh, we receive salvation this morning. We receive salvation. We receive power. For Jesus said in Acts 1 verse 8, For you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in your Jerusalem. Whatever is your immediate vicinity, you will witness about God in your Samaria, whatever is the next geographical location, and even to the uttermost parts of the earth, we have received power. Holy Ghost is upon us. Nakuza Mahan. We receive the kingdom of God, his dominion, his reign. Let the kingdoms of this world be the kingdoms of our Lord and of our Christ. Let the authority of Christ come this morning, come upon us, come upon our families. Let the authority of Christ come upon us. Let the authority of his word be made manifest upon us this morning in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. 
Child of God, I still want you to take another prayer in terms of the legalities and the technicalities that would stand against your deliverance, your transformation, your lifting up because you must be everything God ordained you to be. Whatever voices are speaking against you, all the accusations and the finger pointing in the realm of the spirit, Lord, whatever it is. The Bible says in Colossians 2 verses 14 and 15, and I know we can quote this verse, many of us, but I want to read it for us in the Passion Translation. If you have the Passion Translation, the TPT, open it up, please, and let's look at it together. Bible says in the TPT, in Colossians 2 from verse 14, talking about the legal transaction of the cross, Christ Jesus has canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all. Our sins, our stained soul, he deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. They cannot be retrieved. You know, like on the computer where you've deleted a file permanently and even on the hard drive, it's been wiped. The hard drive has been cleaned and it cannot be retrieved. It cannot be retrieved. Whatever are the legal grounds standing against you, we need to remind the kingdom of darkness because we are in Christ. Whatever they have against us, Jesus has erased it all. Our sins, the sins of our parents, the sins of our grandparents, the sins of our bloodlines. Because we've put our faith in Jesus, our own stained soul, whatever has stained your soul, the failures you have failed since the time you were born and had sense enough to begin to sin. He says he's deleted it all when we put our faith in the finished work of the cross and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam, the fallen nature. Remember, Adam never had any children until he was in rebellion to God. He only had kids as a rebel. Adam never had any kids when he looked exactly like God. So because he was a rebel when he had kids, he is given birth to other rebels. And it continued until our own parents gave birth to us. We were all conceived in iniquity. And you know, that kind of thing, the Adamic sin tried to persist. But we have given our lives to Christ and everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto the cross of Calvary and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. What an awesome thing that Jesus has done for us. You know, I don't know how you can be calm when you read this, because what this means is this, is that no matter the, the demonic things your family has done, no matter the evil in your bloodline from your father's side, your mother's side, if you're married from your spouse, Spouses, father side, mother side, no matter the evil they've done, they may have killed humans, they may have sacrificed children, they may have worshipped evil powers and fallen sons of God, they may have worshipped evil spirits. They may even still be worshiping evil spirits as I'm talking right now. They might be doing evil. But when you come to Christ, uh, the Bible is saying Jesus cancels out all the legal violations on our record. When the accuser of the brethren comes to your DNA to begin to find uh, what is the reason to kill you before your time? What is the reason to oppress you, to keep you limited? What is the reason why you cannot serve God in spirit and in truth? What is the reason why you sin uncontrollably? What is the reason as he tries to find the legal ground he finds that nothing is there child of God lift up your voice and begin to receive uh, on behalf of yourself uh, on behalf of your spouse your children your bloodlines uh, and say because I have come to trust in Jesus Christ uh, I trust in the finished work of the cross uh, the accuser of the brethren will find nothing in me uh, the accuser of the brethren has nothing in me uh, those who are accusing me in the earth realm uh, in the heavenlies uh, under the earth uh, in Hades uh, in the people in the abyss, wherever the accusations are coming from, from intergalactical spaces, wherever there are accusations against my life, against my well-being, wherever I am being accused, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I plead the blood and I remind them of that legal transaction that took place at the cross. I speak the word of God. Christ has canceled out every legal violation.
we had on our record uh, and the old arrest warrant uh, that stood to indict us uh, wherever in the realm of the spirit uh, they have evidence of evil covenants uh, that they would use to arrest us uh, where they have evidence uh, of evil dedications uh, evil initiations uh, where they have evidence uh, of evil trades uh, that my bloodlines entered into lord that the bloodlines i'm connected to by birth by marriage entered into this morning lord uh, i declare the word of god uh, the cross of Calvary, the blood of Jesus uh, erases it all. Uh, he erases all my sins, uh, the sins of my bloodlines. Uh, he erases uh, and cleans our stained soul. Jesus has deleted it all. They cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross, nailed there permanently as a public display of cancellation. Therefore, whatever would stand against us this morning, I declare it cancelled publicly in the name of Jesus. Every ordinance, every handwriting, everything that stands against us, it is publicly cancelled in Jesus' name. Amen. Child of God, I don't know if you understand this, but if you have a legal violation on your record, it means that there is an arrest warrant waiting for you someday, somehow. I know somebody who drove an, on a bus lane in Manchester. They didn't know because there were changes on the road layout and they drove on the bus lane in Manchester. And immediately the cameras took a picture of their car they had a legal violation, but they didn't know. Are you listening? They didn't know. They had a legal violation. They didn't know. Then one day they drove to London to go to the Nigerian embassy. When they got to the embassy and looked for where to park, they parked the car. And when they came back, the car had been clamped. And they said, what is going on? We paid for parking and they'd paid for parking. They paid the congestion charge. Everything was paid for. So why am I being clamped? Why is it that I can't move? I can't move forward. What is the reason for the clamping? Then when they began to phone the numbers and the people came, they said, we will not, we will not release the clamp until you pay 300 pounds. Why? Because you have a, a bus lane violation from Manchester that came up on our system. You have a, 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 a legal violation. You have an outstanding thing that needed to be paid. Now, this person never received any letter telling them they have a, a bus lane violation. They didn't know about it, but the violation was there and it was standing. They said, I've never received any letter. Then when they looked in the system, they found that this violation letter was sent to the wrong address. So because it was in the wrong address for months, they didn't know that there is this thing, but because it was there, no matter what, they still had to pay it. They could have lost their car if they didn't pay it. Are you with me? They would have had to, to suffer the loss of their car. They would have had to suffer that loss. This violation had been done six months before. Nobody in Manchester had ever stopped them. But when they got to London, they got stopped for something that happened in Manchester. Why am I telling you this? It's the same in the realm of the spirit. Somebody somewhere in a village in Zimbabwe, in a village in Nigeria, did something some time ago. They came into agreement with an evil altar. They came into agreement with evil spirits. And they said in our bloodlines, we give you permission. We give you permission. Just give me what I'm looking for. I need riches or I need children. I need a child right now or I need a boy. I only have girls. They said, right, you need a boy. Now give us the names of all your girls. They gave them the names. And immediately there was a contract put in place. And that contract maybe, for example, said none of the girls in that family should ever get married. They are married to the water spirit that gave their mother a son. So now you leave Zimbabwe, you leave Nigeria, you come to Manchester. You see a fine, fine young man in church and you decide to get married. And then as soon as you try to marry, all hell breaks loose. And even the guy cancels the engagement or you get married and the marriage is a problem every day is threatened with breaking. Why? Because there is a violation of something that had been agreed. And whether you know about it or you don't know about it, you have an arrest warrant that the familiar spirits have permission to arrest you. As you try to get this and you try to get that, they have permission to arrest you. The agreement was that in this bloodline, people die before their time. They must not reach the age of 50. 
Now you don't know this, but the arrest warrant is out, is in force. The demons have been assigned to say nobody here should live be beyond 50. Are you with me, child of God? So I want you to now pray with understanding concerning all the bloodlines you're connected to. When I say bloodlines, I mean your family line from your mother's side all the way back to Adam and Eve, from your father's side all the way back to Adam and Eve. If you have children, the bloodline of the person you had children with all the way back to Adam and Eve. If you're married, the bloodline of your spouse, their father, their mother, all the way back to Adam and Eve. Are there any things that were agreed with evil powers that are still in force and are speaking against you and are creating an evil hindrance and a barrier and a wall and are preventing your deliverance? I want you to speak. Don't say my life is perfect because you never know. Begin to cover every ground. Father, by the power in the name of Jesus, the Bible says that you have canceled out every legal violation. Lord, are there areas in my life uh, where the enemy and his agents uh, are saying I am in violation to what was agreed? Uh, are they accusing me uh, in any way? Uh, are they saying there is a trade they have? Uh, there is a covenant they have? Uh, there is a contract they have uh, with my bloodlines uh, from my father's side, my mother's side, uh, my spouse's father's side, his mother's side, uh, all the bloodlines I'm connected to by marriage, by relationship, all the way back to Adam and Eve. Uh, Lord, I am asking uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, whatever evil agreements uh, are in force uh, that have led to familiar spirits uh, attacking my life, uh, attacking my family, attacking my children. Father, by the blood of Jesus, uh, let all these legal violations be cancelled. Uh, whatever was agreed uh, that would hinder me, Lord, uh, I am asking, oh God, uh, let the transaction of the cross uh, cancel them out uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, where they are arrested rest warrants in the realm of the spirit. Some of these warrants say you cannot be alive now. You cannot have money. You cannot be happily married. Some of the warrants are saying you must fail. I've seen some people they start university. They never finish. Just two months to finishing. They will do something. They will leave. After three years of studying, what are the arrest warrants? Some of them say you cannot move forward. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come by the blood. We come by the blood. Whatever Lord, uh, evil assignments uh, have been released against us uh, from the realm of the spirit. Uh, let them be nailed to the cross. Let them be nailed to the cross. In some families, uh, people have come into covenant uh, with a uh, spirit husband, spirit wife, uh, the incubus and the succubus, uh, and then their children, their children's children inherit the incubus and the succubus. Uh, Father, by the blood of Jesus, uh, let every evil marriage transaction, every evil marriage certificate from the realm of the spirit uh, be nailed to the cross, be nailed to the cross. Uh, whoever was married to an evil entity, even before they were born, uh, we nail that marriage certificate to the cross uh, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, some people were dedicated to evil altars. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we nail it to the cross. We nail it to the cross. In the name of the Lord Jesus, some people, evil altars were dedicated. They were dedicated to evil altars. They are supposed to be an evil priest or priestess. And when they refuse the assignment, they attack their health. Some people, I know some people, even back home where we come from, they are called by evil altars. And when they refuse, they strike them with sickness, with car accidents and all sorts. Lord, we plead the blood. We nail to the cross. Evil dedications. Evil dedications. Some people begin to dream about snakes and all sorts because they were dedicated to witchcraft altars. Father, by the blood of Jesus, evil dedications be nailed to the cross. Be nailed to the cross. Let our bloodlines all the way back to Adam and Eve be cleansed where our souls have been stained where our souls have been stained your soul is your mind your will your emotions where there is a stain on your soul that makes you behave wrongly makes you make the wrong decisions make you do the wrong thing let that stain be cleansed in the mighty name of the lord jesus father by the blood of jesus whatever would trigger backlash from the kingdom of darkness against any one of us here we are pleading the blood and declaring it nailed to the cross whatever would give them the legal ground to steal to kill and destroy we declare it nailed to the cross in the mighty name of the lord jesus thank you father the bible says in revelation 12 verse 10 the accuser of the brethren 
who keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And it says they did not love their lives or renounce their faith even when faced with death. In other words, the people who are victorious over the accuser are those who have surrendered their lives completely to God. You don't have any agenda for yourself. You are like a living sacrifice according to Romans 12 from verse 1. You don't have your agendas anymore. Whatever God wants, you say, yes, Lord. God says, I'm sending you to Nineveh, my prophet Jonah. You are saying, yes, sir. You are not taking a, a ship and going to Tashish. I want us to pray this morning. Lord, I make up my mind to live a life of surrender in the name of Jesus. And as I live a life of surrender, Lord, I overcome the accuser by the blood of the lamb and by the word of my testimony this morning. My life is surrendered to you. My life is not my own. I understand that I've been bought and purchased with a price. And that was a big price. The price of the the life of the son of the living God who went through torture, who went through inhumane and degrading treatment so that I could be delivered. Jesus suffered pain of inexpressible, um, you know, depths so that I could be delivered. And so I surrendered to him who loved me enough to die in my place. The Bible says for scarcely for a righteous man will anyone choose to die. But God commends his love towards us that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And because Jesus, you love me so so I surrender to you today. And as I surrender, I overcome the accuser by your blood and by the word of my testimony. I testify this morning that I'm a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. I testify this morning. My God is on the throne. My God is on my side in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We overcome. We overcome every voice speaking against us in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the natural, in the heavenlies, on the earth, under the earth, in the regions of the dead, under the water, in the water bodies. Uh, every voice speaking against us uh, in the forests, in the caves, uh, La Masia, in the bush, uh, every voice speaking against us. Uh, we overcome by the blood of the lamb. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. In the name of Jesus, we surrender. We surrender to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Going back to verse 1 of Revelation 12. And a great sign, warning of an ominous and frightening future event, appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head, a crown of 12 stars. That woman represents the nation Israel, prophetically speaking but also can represent anyone who is about to give birth to something, something good, something powerful, about to give birth to destiny. She was with child, this woman. This is Israel carrying the Messiah. But that was, could also be you, pregnant with your testimony of deliverance, of healing, of transformation, of provision. That could be you. And this woman was in labor, the Bible says, and about to give birth. Then another sign was seen in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, Satan himself, Hashatan, the adversary, the antidikos, the opposer who is against our rights. He appeared with seven heads and ten horns and on his heads were seven royal crowns. And we don't want to go into the exegesis of that really, but that's just him coming with authority over the nations um, and with his tail. He swept across the sky and dragged away a third of the stars of heaven and flung them to the earth. So this is the third of the angels in heaven who rebelled against God. He swept them out. He removed them from that place of glory and brought them down to the earth. Child of God, I want to pray before we take the prayer point I wanted to give us. You know, every satanic dragon tail that is trying to sweep you away from the place of spiritual glory, the place of peace, the place of well-being. You know, there is a place where you are full of fire for God and something happens and causes you to lose your faith. We're going to ask God this morning, whatever the tale of Hashatan is trying to sweep you away from that place, we rebuke him in the name of Jesus. We stand our ground and say no, no backsliding, no retreat, no surrender in the name of Jesus. We will not lose our faith. We will not lose our faith. For everything the devil does against you is designed to cause you to lose faith. He just wants you to stop, stop, stop believing, stop believing, stop trusting God. 
God. Uh, stop praying. Stop reading your Bible. Stop trusting the word of God. But Lord, this morning we come against uh, every attempt uh, to remove us from the place of glory. Because we are on Mount Zion. Hashatan managed to remove a third of the angels of God, cause them to rebel against God and to live in darkness. And they have a horrible fate waiting for them. Father God, whatever wants to remove us from your glory, wants to remove us from under the shadow of your wings. Lord, we stand firm this morning. We submit ourselves to God. We resist the devil and he must flee from us. James 4, 7. We resist. We submit to you, O God. We resist the devil. He must flee this morning. In the name of Jesus, we speak over our sons, our daughters, uh, our family members, uh, our spouse, our brothers, our sisters, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Nobody around us will backslide. Even our youngest children, they will continue to live by faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they will not lose their faith. Uh, nothing will remove them from the place of glory. In Jesus name. Amen. These angels are described as the stars of the heavens. They had a position. They were shining stars. They had a position of preeminence and prominence. Father, whatever wants to remove us from our position of preeminence and pro prominence, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We will continue to shine as stars. Our children will continue to shine as stars. Spouses, brothers, sisters, Lord, everyone around us, they will shine. Every child of God on this prayer altar, you will shine. You are a star. Nothing will remove you from your position of prominence and preeminence in the name of Jesus. So now look at verse four again of Revelation 12. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth. He stood in front of her, watching her birth canal, watching to see when the baby would come out, when the head would come out so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. But she did give birth to a son, a male child, who is destined to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. So that's talking about the Messiah. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness. This will happen to Israel in the days of the great tribulation. But also prophetically, it represents the fact that every time the dragon has a case with you and wants to devour what you are giving birth to, there is a hiding place in God. Remember, we started with Psalm 90. Oh God, you've been our dwelling place from the ages past, from generation to generation. You are our hiding place. The woman fled to a place in the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that she would be nourished there. For 1,260 days, 42 months or three and a half years. Child of God, there is a place in God where you too can hide. Where the dragon is standing and positioning himself to devour your testimony this morning. I want you to pray and say in the name of Jesus, I come against all the works of the dragon, all the works of the kingdom of darkness. Wherever they are trying to devour my testimony, I stand my ground in Jesus and I say no. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 6.10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God. Stand your ground because you are not wrestling flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Stand your ground this morning with the full armor of God. Father Lord, I stand my ground. Wherever the dragon, the enemy, Hashatan, the adversary, any power is standing, Lord, to devour my testimony. In the name of Jesus, I stand my ground on the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. I stand my ground and I come against them. Every anti-testimony spirit, every anti-breakthrough spirit, every anti-peace spirit, every spirit assigned to hinder your breakthrough, whether it's an angelic spirit, a human spirit, a human agent, whatever they are, Father, we stand against them this morning. We stand against uh, every devourer of testimonies. Uh, we stand against them. Whatever is seen, uh, your spiritual pregnancy, that you are pregnant with good things. Uh, you are pregnant with that business. Uh, you are about to give birth to millions. Uh, you are pregnant uh, with a child. Uh, that child, that Isaac, uh, that you've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, you are pregnant with that child. Uh, whatever wants to devour your pregnancy, we come against it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, whatever wants to eat up uh, what God has cooked, 
cooked for you. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Whatever has read the signs, the stars, the planets, whatever has read the omens in the sky, and they can see that this is your season. This is your time. This is your season. This is your time. And they position themselves to deny you of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I stand against them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Child of God, take your stand. Take your stand in the name of Jesus. Father, we stand against the works of the enemy. With the full armor of God, we stand this morning with the belt of truth, with the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We raise the shield of faith and our heads are covered with the helmet of salvation. We take up the sword of the spirit. We stand against it. Whatever Lord wants to steal the testimonies of your children here. Mighty God, I stand against it. I stand against it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you, you fallen powers of, of heaven. The Lord rebuke you, you principalities, you ruling demons. You are rebuked in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord rebuke you. Masika Labosia, let the fire of God consume you and burn all around us. Send you far away from us. You will not function anywhere near us. Wherever you've invaded our space to come and steal what God has in store for us, I chase you away. Let the wind of the Spirit blow you away back to the abyss. Let the wind of the Spirit blow you away. Let the power of God move you from our vicinity forcibly, forcefully in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, that every testimony that has our names written on, it shall come to pass. All the blessings that have our names written on, they arrive, they have arrived and we possess our possessions. We walk in your joy, in your peace and in divine breakthrough. We celebrate Lord what you have done in the name of Jesus. Father, there is no blessing that will remain held up in the realm of the spirit. Let there be a release this morning. Let there be a release this morning in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Going back to Colossians 2 verse 15. Bible says Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and the principalities of darkness. I'm still reading passion there in Colossians. Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his prisoners. Hallelujah. I want you to declare over your life because you know what? There is a hiding place in God. You must be hidden. Your family must be hidden. But the powers and the principalities of darkness, they must be disgraced publicly. Publicly. And any human agent who has been serving them will be exposed. They will come and confess what they've done. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God will burn them so much that they will have to confess what they've done. They will be exposed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mighty God, this morning, according to your word in Colossians 2.15, Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and the principalities of darkness. Today, let them be publicly disgraced in my life. Let them fail publicly. Let everyone know my testimony. Let them fail, Lord, in every way they've come against us. I declare their failure. Lord, today uh, I thank you that they are stripped of all their weaponry. Any weapon that they used against us, uh, they've been stripped of that weapon. Isaiah 54, 17, for no weapon fashioned against us will prosper. Every tongue that has risen up in judgment against us is condemned. This is our heritage as servants of the Lord. Our righteousness is of God. Any spiritual authority that any evil altar had over us, Father, in the name of Jesus, is being stripped off. No evil altar can rule over us, rule over our bloodlines, rule over our children. Whatever spiritual authority they have is stripped off. Lord, the spiritual authority of false prophets is stripped off our heads. The spiritual authority of lying spirits, Lord, we reject it. The spiritual authority of fallen angels and powers of darkness, it is stripped off. We, not, we are not under them. By the power of the cross, Jesus has led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. Every power of darkness, no matter your name, we might not know all your names, but this morning we declare you are a prisoner of Christ. You cannot prevail over us. You are a prisoner of Christ.
Anytime you come near us, you will be immediately arrested by the angels of God because you will be in violation of the spiritual transaction that says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Anytime you come near us, you will be immediately arrested by the angels of God with the chains of Holy Ghost fire. Any power Lord that tries to violate Colossians 2. 14 and 15, we declare this morning, they will be immediately arrested. We might not even get to know about it. Lord, wherever we go, I speak over your children here. I speak over the families we represent. Wherever satanic powers will try to break Colossians 2, 14 and 15, we declare at that moment when they try to break this scripture, Lord, they will be immediately apprehended by the angels of God and bound with Holy Ghost fire chains and they will be led to where the true Lord Jesus Christ sends them. Because the Bible says in Philippians 2, 9 and 10, God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name above all names that at the mention of the name Jesus, every name must bow of things in heaven, of things on the earth, of things under the earth. Every tongue must confess Jesus is Lord. So whoever tries to violate the word of God, we declare an arrest warrant for you from the angelic realm of almighty God. You will be immediately arrested. You must cease and desist your evil activities against God's children. Father, this we ask and we receive it in Jesus' matchless name. We cover everyone here in the blood of Jesus. We cover all our families in the blood of Jesus. No retaliation, no backlash is permitted. We are in the secret place of the most high God under the shadow of the almighty. Every attempt by the enemy to undo our prayers must be immediately met with divine punishment. Let judgment from the throne of grace and mercy be released against the enemy and his agents immediately. Let them be, oh God, arrested and sent to where you want to send them in the name of the Lord Jesus. As for us and our household, this morning we choose life, we refuse death. We choose blessing, we refuse curse. We choose to serve you, oh God, all the days of our lives. And we thank you that it shall continue to be well with us. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen.